Hi, my name is No Shirts, I'm going to go show on. It's my Spurs video podcast. Um, one all. This result, I did predict. I was, you know, saying it's, it's just very, very close, and it was even, and, and that would be right. Obviously, I'm not so happy that goal we conceded. Um, Benny, obviously, actually, Carl, that was an excellent handball. Obviously, that did give him the advantage, and it's it's a tough one, really. You know, can you know, but. The referee doesn't see it, but I think it's accidental. It doesn't matter. Benny should have been counting from Sturridge. And I'll give Sturridge. Sturridge is superb throughout the game. Superb. Um, him and Sandro, you know, were the players I thought would reset out for me. Luca, that second half was invisible. We couldn't really get him into the game. And obviously, you know, we, we brought off, you know, Pav, brought on Pav, sorry, for um, Rafa Vanderbart. And I think there was an injury to Rafa. I must say, say, I don't know if that's true or not. But obviously, got that Norwich thing coming up. Going to try and protect as many of our players as we can. You know, and Bale, you know, great performance. Oh, we were so, you know, so close to winning a few times. I thought he had some really good chances. Benny, did, I don't know why. He, he didn't have that much joy on the left-hand side as you thought he would have done. Carl Walker was very wasteful in possession. I don't know whether it's because he's got longer hair, but he just didn't seem to measure his passes and just... Yeah, I think he had a lot more time than he realised he just didn't know that. I think it's experience. I think the more games you play, the more better decision you make will become. Parker really didn't really struggle. He got his foot in, but you know, this is you know, we are playing amongst some of the best midfield you know, in you know, in in the Premier League. And I think our midfield is e- equally as good. I think the lack of say Aaron Lennon makes it very difficult for us because by having those two wingers stretching attacking the full backs it's very difficult for the likes of um, you know their you know their 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 fullbacks to get forward. That being said, you know beautiful bit of play by Drogba to feed in Cole, you know, and that's the kind of forward play. That's the reason why he's one of the best players in the world. Um, John Terry, you know, wasn't surprised that you know we heard a few of those um, comments. Someone that what the guys were in the handheld ca- head head cams would have said thing that they've seen about that. But um, yeah, it turns out yeah, he's one that ended up making the difference last minute, and what, I'm not surprised by that. To be fair, I think Adebayor could have shot a little bit harder, but you know it happens. Yeah, and I think a point of the fair result. I don't think we played that brilliantly. You know, par and patches. I think Chelsea did play for the majority of the game. They played better, but didn't really do anything threatening. I mean, obviously they could drop it the post, but I think we had that covered. Terry had a very good header, which if he'd connected, and Ramirez again. So I think the draw is a fair result. Hopefully, this, you know, this the Wolves are all oh, Chelsea are back, you know, because now they've played one room. Obviously, they're more motivated to play against us and our rivals. And secondly, obviously John Terry, obviously very motivated. And I mean, let's face it, you know, they you know, didn't have a proper centre half. I mean, Bale wasn't able to give Ferreira the more than he gave him a few years ago. And um, you know. They obviously lost Mikel as well, so they played very. You know, I, I prefer Ram- Ramon in that position to Mikel, but you got to give him credit. Um, obviously, it'll be interesting to see how they go how they're going forward. I still see us, you know, obviously a point ahead of, we're still still ahead of them, and we've got the game in hand. Um, in terms of other thoughts, I really think we need to go get a right winger as soon as possible. Um, Pav, as good as you know, he didn't actually have, to have a terrible game. Played some decent first touches, didn't really do that much. But to tell you, if Modric was had some bad passes, they weren't that great. I and mean, there was some good bit of footwork, but there was some unquestionably poor passes. There was one free kick; it was way too short, and I just don't get, you know. And that was just uh, me personally. I was thinking something didn't, didn't sit right with me personally, but I don't know. He he wasn't that great on on Sunday, and he he wasn't that great tonight. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's January. Is he itching for a move? It just didn't. There weren't. There, there wasn't as much we all know. But then anyway, it was such a tight defensive midfield. It was always going to be difficult anyway. Um, but I think we do need to get a right winger because now I look at it. This is my understanding. We bought on Pienaar because well, Lennon. We need to cut for Lennon. Benny going out of line. Pienaar, good option. Yeah, great. Lennon's injured, so why are we not playing Pienaar? You know, it would make sense to play Pienaar. Or play a three-five-two because I, I I honestly believe if we had had three-five-two, we would not have conceded because we would have had enough cover, you know. Um, but 
it happens, let's move on with it. You guys all know that I've been waiting Juvetovic. I saw him play against Fiorentina, um, sorry, or Fiorentina against Siena. You know, he has, you know, he did test the goalkeeper. It was a normal draw, but he did test the goalkeeper a few times, showed some good runs, good penetration. Obviously, Siena were happy to get a point. They're not a massive side in in, in, you know, in, in Italy, but um, you know, they were happy to get the point really out of their derby. It was a derby game as well, so it's a lot bit tighter. But Juvetovic is the player I definitely think we should be looking at. I don't know why the hell we're looking at Amore. He's not doing anything. Hardly played, unfit, 31 years old. What on earth are you going to do? You know, if we had any sense, which I'm hoping, you know, I would go, you know, I'd invest, you know, Juvetovic. You know, he's competition for Lennon, he's competition for striker with the foe. He, you know, so I think he covers two positions. And if we want to go 4 2 3 1, he can play as an inside forward. He can even possibly give competition for Rafa. Possibly, you know. I think he's a very good player. And why are we not bidding for him? It just doesn't make any sense, from my point of view. And when Bale switched, that was great. But then Benny had no one to pass, to pass towards. There was, no, there was no one on that left hand side. Yeah, he could either leak or cut him, but he hasn't offered that pace up front. So we looked unbalanced. You know, obviously, you know, if you get, I mean, Bale and then I like, for me, I like, I like you know, um, Jerry Rice and John Taylor for the 49ers. Their width, their ability is width. They're, they're, they're both white, you know, they're wide receivers, John Taylor and Rice for the 49ers. And although Jerry Rice was the more famous of them, um, Taylor was one that he could really hurt you. You know, he could really hurt you. He was definitely, definitely dangerous. And I think uh, Bale and Lennon, when they are on fire, they are impossible to stop. Um, and I do think that you know, I think if Pino is going to do it for us, then we need to think of something because Pino isn't doing it. And Rafa playing out of position, you know, we need to do something about it. We need to get that width because if I get in that width, we get we create the, we create the pockets for you know. Rafa and Luca. Um, if you want to play, if you want to play, you know, three in the middle, then have at least have Sandro and Parker on either side protecting it, you know, giving them that space. So you can, you know, he's actually in the centre. You can drop, you know, drop deep string. You know, even go in front of like more of a deep line play. Make go in front of the back four if he needs to to start spreading the play around. Um, hopefully, one pe people have slated me for this because they rate Sandro quite rightly. I think a player that we will look incredibly forward to is having back is Huddleston. Huddleston is nowhere, nowhere near as dynamic as Sandro, without a doubt. He's nowhere near as dynamic, but he has six foot three. He's hard. He's hard to be more comfortable. He provides a bit of strength in that. More importantly, his Hollywood passing, you know, is something that we are going to miss. His passing range. He's a deep. He, he produces some absolute deep, crisp passes, and I think if he can time the runs of say like the Walker and Bale. I think that will have something will happen, and, it, and it's good to bring on. I mean, I don't think don't remember Sancho played very well for night, you know, for four ninety minutes. But I think, you know, if you need to change things out, change mix things up, I would bring on, you know, Huddleston. He's former defender. He doesn't really put himself about, but you know, he will defend a little bit. There's no Jack Rodwell for you know in terms of energy, but he's got a lot more quality on the ball, I think, for the moment. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm gonna have a big shout out. Two. Well, I'm, I'm not friends on Facebook. But, um, actually, I'm gonna give a shout out to Big Greg Smith actually because he came out with one of the funniest chants. I honestly, it was, it was absolutely classic. You know, and it's, it goes to the Chinzy Adam family. It goes, his mother is a stealer, his father's a drug dealer. He's a, he's a effing cheater. The sons, it's the sons of effing cheater. The Terry family. And so for Greg, you get my shout out of the video podcast. Uh, definitely check out Jim Dugan, his um, topspurs.com. Really check that out, it's a great, very good site. Uh, Greg's dad, Paul Smith, runs a very good site called Spurs Odyssey. And a lot of my guys, um, Peter, who was, uh, who was his birthday a few, a few days ago, um, Jez, you know, Jeremy Conan, loads of good guys, they they post on a site called Spurs Forum, the UK. So yeah, check those out. Um, going into the Norwich game, obviously you know we've you know we've got a few injuries. It's niggling, but I think we should be able to go through it. And I hope you you know enjoy this video podcast. Please click on the ad links if they appear. And um, yeah, come on, you Spurs.